So with some of the tools that we use to manipulate our style game models, we're going to need to convert uh, our pickle file, which is a TensorFlow file, to uh, a .pt file, which is what we're going to use for some of the PyTorch uh, style GAN2 repos. So this will be helpful for things like the GAN space model or for things like network bending. Um, basically, all you need to do is convert one model file to another one, and there's a pretty easy script to do that. So I'm just going to walk through the steps to do that. Um, you can do this on Colab. It's really straightforward and easy, um, but you can also take these and if you want to move them to your server, you can run these same commands. Um, so first thing we're going to do is let's just make sure that we're running the GPU. Um, so this is already set here, um, just because I use Colab Pro, I'll set to high RAM. And then we're going to want to make sure we connect. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we just want to make sure that we're uh, running TensorFlow 1, since that's what uh, StyleGAN 2 is based on. So we're on that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to download both the PyTorch uh, version of StyleGAN2 and the uh, official StyleGAN2 repo. This is my forked version of the NVIDIA one. It doesn't matter what you use. As long as it can run the StyleGAN2 stuff in TensorFlow, you'll be fine. Um, the PyTorch 2 model is this uh, Rosenality one. Um, this seems to be the most popular and the one that everyone works from, so we'll just use that. Um, this PyTorch model or PyTorch repo does require uh, Ninja, so we're going to install this um, this pip version. So we're just going to do shift return, run this. And it does install pretty quickly. Just make sure that we have our files being generated here. Yep, so everything is installed. Um, so next thing we need to do is we just need to get a pickle file. Um, so for this demo, I'm just going to use uh, the FFHQ model. This is the one that I have um, running on my machine, um, or just like I have hosted on my own Google Drive file. Um, you could also just upload a pickle file. So if you already have it locally, you can just upload it uh, into the fi finder here. Um, I just find this, the G down version works faster. So I'm just going to download this. I refresh my files. There we go. So the last thing we need to do here is we just need to make sure that we're using um, this path and pasting this in here. So I'm just going to grab this path um, by right-clicking on that file, hit Copy Path, and paste it in here. Um, so that's just telling, that's just saving as a, as a variable where the pickle file is. And the very last thing we need to do is just run the converter. So this is going to um, just convert the weights uh, from the StyleGAN2 uh, TensorFlow model, and then this, this is the pickle file. Um, and it's going to convert it to a PyTorch file. So we're just going to hit Shift Return. This will take a little bit of time because it has to set up those, um, those CUDA processors. And while this works, I'll tell you that we're going to um, in some future videos, I'll show you how to use the network bending um, repository to do some really cool sort of trippy and glitchy stuff with your model files. And then um, in some previous videos, I've already shown how to use um, the GAN space uh, repo. And the GAN space repo is really great because um, what it allows you to do is uh, look for feature vectors and that sort of thing inside of um, your model. So uh, pretty helpful stuff. Um, take a look at the GAN space videos I already have. It's part of that style GAN2 class. Um, that I taught, so I'll link to maybe the video here. Um, try to see why this is running so slow. There we go. It took way too long. That was really slow. At this point, you're probably already done with this video, so we'll just keep letting this run. Um, when it finishes, uh, we'll have a .pt file with the same name as a, this pickle file, and then it'll also generate a PNG, um, just to sort of show you like a handful of samples that it generated from the PyTorch version. Um, good to check to just make sure that that is not super weird. Um, but yeah, one thing I should note that I did not note earlier is you need to be using a square um, pickle file from this. So if you've done any of my videos where we generate rectangular uh, pickle models. This won't really work. So unfortunately, you're kind of out of luck in those areas. That's why I've sort of shifted to like 
where I now explain like if you want to do some crazy stuff with your pickle models, like try to use um, the 1024 by 1024 square because a lot of this stuff is already set up for that. Uh, so unfortunately, most of these sort of new repos are not really set up to handle rectangular uh, models. There's some tricks around it, which maybe I'll show a video for um, in the future. Um, but I would probably recommend to start with just to use the, uh, the square models. Okay, looks like this is finished. Let's refresh over here. Yep, so we've got our PNG file. It's probably a big file because it is the 1024 model. Um, yep, so you'll see here it generated a couple images. Um, again, you know, it's just FHQ, nothing fancy. Um, I don't know what those gray images are supposed to be. Maybe uh, some of the. I don't know. Anyway, um, I want. I want to be. This is probably working fine. Um, what we have. So what you have here is the .pt file. This is what you're going to use going forward in any of the PyTorch repos. Um, so I recommend just downloading this and saving it, or moving it over to your Google Drive. Um, it's actually it's pretty small, I think, in comparison to um, the .pkl files. I think it's like half the size. So um, you know, lots of people tend to use the PyTorch version of things because it's a little bit easier to read. Uh, TensorFlow is definitely not the easiest language on earth. Um, so lots of people tend to work in the PyTorch stuff when they're working on um, their own version. So um, that's it for this video. Uh, ask me questions in Slack if you have any, if any uh, more interest, and then keep an eye out for some future videos on using the network bending model. Uh, thanks.